Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to answer a question from somebody, so not my official Sunday release video, um, but Ivan asked a question, and I figured it'd be easier to answer this through video, and I'm sure a lot of people have had similar question, so I'm just going to answer this on here. The question is, how do quants price using Black-Scholes formula in the real world? Uh, you know there is the basic formula that can be found in books and the internet. I have seen approximations to these pricing using tree methods. Um, I make this question because this price seems more theoretical than anything else. How can they conclude that the price is not too high, expensive for customers, or too low, not profitable for the issuer? Uh, thanks in advance. So I'm going to kind of rewind this and answer it in different pieces. Um, the first thing being it's too theoretical. So as I'm sitting here, um, I actually have some of my textbooks here on derivative pricing. And we're actually going to answer use this book a little bit. So this is like a very general book, but we're going to use this to answer the question a little bit. And you're completely right in the fact that it seems very theoretical, right? Most things we do in finance, data analytics, you know, financial engineering applications, a lot of times they just seem like very applicable and hands-on. And yet when you actually dive into financial engineering, it's this very different world and realm, especially when you get into risk neutral pricing. Uh, it seems like, oh, this can't be practical. It's too theoretical. Um, but I'm here to tell you it makes complete sense. And yes, a lot of financial engineers live in kind of these alternate realms of how things actually work in the real world based on the mathematics behind it. So yes, it seems very theoretical. Um, yes, this is what we actually use when we actually price derivatives, especially like European options. But then when you go into exotic options as well, this realm of risk neutral pricing applies even more. And so it's very hard to wrap your head around a lot of these concepts, but yes, you need to know them. And yes, they are actually used. Um, so what do people actually use in the real industry? So I know most of you can like go into Excel, right? And you can type in the formulas and you can use like the norm distribution function in Excel and you can actually calculate out the Black-Scholes pricing. However, this is not accurate. Um, the reason I say this, so hold on, hold on. That's, that's the actual formula. That's the one you're talking about. You can find in textbooks and online. Um, but one of the problems with the Black-Scholes is that there are a bunch of assumptions that have to be met for it to hold. Um, the assumptions are not very realistic in many senses. However, the Black-Scholes is the only closed form solution for pricing European options. The thing is in the real world, it's very complicated. It's very complex. So the Black-Scholes formula that you will use, that you will see in textbooks, um, you can use that and get a general price. Um, the tree method, as you mentioned, one of the key aspects of derivative pricing and knowing if it's priced correctly is that you need to ensure that there is no opportunity for arbitrage. It has to be priced fairly in the sense that nobody can buy or sell and make a profit with taking no risk. And I think my favorite um, analogy of this is by Emmanuel Derman. He talks about like it's a fruit salad. I believe it's from him. He at least has mentioned it. But basically it's a fruit salad in the sense that, you know, you might have like cherries and peaches and pears and apples and whatever inside this fruit salad. Um, financial derivative pricing is typically learned in the sense that you can dissect it into pieces. And then if you add all the pieces together, they'll get the same price. It's kind of how trees work. It's how you learn um, arbitrage pricing. But yes, this is not realistic. And what do we use in real practice? Let me get to that here in a second. Um, there are four main assumptions behind the Black-Scholes. Uh, the first one is the stock price evolves according to geometric Brownian motion. The second one is the risk-free rate of interest denoted as R is constant. Um, there are no dividends on the underlying stock during the life of the option. All options are European in style with maturity date T and strike price K. Okay, so some of these are pretty straightforward. Some of these aren't really that much of a stretch. Uh, one thing that's not really mentioned in here, but if you skip forward in a lot of the readings, they'll start talking about volatility. So in practice, you can use implied volatility. Implied volatility is the volatility that you can see and measure from the market given historical data. Um, that's okay to use, but a lot of times volatility as you dive into financial engineering has smiles and smirks, and there are different aspects of financial engineering, different things that impact your volatility. Um, the shapes, for example, time is one of those key factors that changes um, how volatility behaves and responds. And there are entire methods out there for actually predicting um, volatility to better optimize the model. Um, so again, there's Garch. I know Jim Gatherall, one of the leading experts in volatility modeling. 
Um, he has the rough volatility model. But the thing is, is in practice, what do we actually use? You have to take this framework that you learn, right? So all this risk neutral pricing, all this theory that we talked about. And then you have to say, I'm not gonna buy this assumption. And you pick an assumption, for example, like volatility, we need to adjust that. Or like interest rates, right? They're not constant. In the real world, they change. So then you start putting that into your theory. You start using stochastic calculus and you can start pulling this apart. But when you start pulling this apart, the model gets very, very complicated. It's not a closed form solution anymore. And so you have to do like a numerical approximation, numerical methods to get to some solution that's actually more accurate than the black shoals. Because now instead of saying this is the best pricing given these assumptions, you start saying I'm gonna use the real world instead of the assumptions and you start pricing it. So to answer this, what do we use? Um, trading firms have proprietary formulas. So everybody goes out, they do research, whether it's on you know, European options or if it's on exotic options, right? People specialize in different markets and they price these derivatives with the theory that you're going to learn and they create their own version of these models with a few things to consider. One, simplicity. So Black-Scholes is super, super simple. It's super fast to calculate. Um, Speedwise is probably the fastest to do. However, right, you want accuracy on price. The more accurate you get, um, the more complicated you get the mathematical structures to get to an estimation of these derivative prices, um, the computation time is gonna be very, very long. So you're gonna have high latency on this. So you have to have this trade-off between, you know, real world applications and complexity with simplicity, but not very realistic. Um, most financial engineering programs, at least well-written ones, they should start with the black shoals and then tell you it's complete garbage. And then they should do all the assumptions and start trying to model these aspects and show you that it gets super complicated. And a lot of times there's not a perfect solution. And then the program should round back on that. The black shoals is amazing. Um, it simplifies all this complexity um, into this very, very nice and neat nutshell. And it's an amazing formula. So anyways, I hope that answers your question. Models are proprietary. Every firm has basically their own version of it. They tweak things and adjust things to try to get the most accurate pricing as possible. Accurate pricing means no arbitrage opportunities. Um, so essentially you have to have mathematical theory and drive to getting to that um, accurate pricing. And then theoretically, yes, you need to know all this theory. It's very, very important for derivative pricings. It's one reason why a lot of people don't go into financial engineering or aren't actually financial engineers. And I think it's one reason that just drives me nuts when you have all these rookie people out there claiming to be financial engineers or claiming to be quants, um, even from programs that are financial engineering programs that aren't real ones. Because when you start really diving in and you start really tearing things apart, things get very, very complicated. And it does take a lot of intellect, a lot of training and a lot of time to really understand everything. So anyways, I hope that answers your question. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.